It's good actually because I, I wanted to do a bit. I didn't play very well. I'm here with my very good friend Brian. He's back. He was um, here on the channel before talking about um, Stratocasters, I think it was. Mm -hmm. so my, my, my love. Your love of Stratocasters, mm -hmm. and it's good to have you back, Brian. Um, the reason we're, we're here today is to, to really talk up to Brian about why he bought these two guitars, um, which are beautiful PRS, very expensive guitars. Because, um, you know, obviously, Brian, you know I'm a big fan of PRS, don't you? Well, it's, it's a, a a lack of fondness that we we've shared. So, um, so like like Ramon, I've I've played PRSs over the decades, and whilst admiring their build quality, could never get on with them as, as guitars. They never did anything for me um, for for reasons I'm not entirely sure. Um, but the question is why why these two? And I think it's because they're both five nine fours, which means that they have Gibson scale length. They're, they're both lacking lots of wood. One's hollow, one's semi-hollow, and got a tremolo on it as well. Um, and they both got vintage neck profiles, so they are more more of a classically inspired guitar. But the I, I guess the story, the, the the person to blame for all of this is is Tag Skinner from the the Gear page. So um, Tag, he was a famous guy who said about the dunk, was it nose tone? He, 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 well, so, so, so Tag is a, an interesting character from New Jersey who... Um, He's a nice guy. A nice super, guy. super nice guy and super strong opinions that he always backs up with evidence and clips. Um, mm -hmm. so, so it's not a question of, of whether, whether you like him or don't like him, it's just that, that when he says, I like, I think this does something like that, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's always an interesting observation. So anyway, so Tag, Tag has been one of the world's biggest PRS fans, um, and when he got this one, which is a, a hollow, and, and he played some clips on it, I thought, well that doesn't sound like a PRS, and that sounds like a guitar that I could love. Because, I mean, do you remember, Brian, we went into um, Anderson's guitar store, didn't we? Yeah, and we played 30 years. of them. And we, yeah, and we played the standard, you know, the standard models. Yeah. And I kind of went in there with a real open mind, and I was a bit disappointed. Well. Yeah. So yeah, so PRSs are a love love hate thing, but but we we didn't love them. Um, no, and and I don't know whether it's the twenty five inch scale length, the tone of the pickups, or or what it is. Whether they're just too perfect sounding and they lack that vintage character. But anyway, so so then fast forward, tag tag buys one of these and raves about it, and and I had I look it up and discover that I can get one from a shop in the Netherlands. We're in the UK. Um, so a shop called Dykeman's and a, and a guy, a super friendly guy there, Jan Willem, um, and he said, "Well, you can have, the, you know, you can buy this um, and you can try it out, and you know, if you like it, you can keep it, and if you if you don't, you can ship it back to the Netherlands." I'm thinking, "Well, okay, there's a, a way to try out a private stock guitar." Um, got the guitar, absolutely amazing, um, mm -hmm. um, completely different to every. So that was that that one. That's this one. The so one. so this hollow body to. Um, with an African black wood board, mahogany neck, um, weighs just weighs six pounds, give or take an ounce, um, and has amazing tones. From so let me just play. Head. Let me just play that one then. If you swap over. Yeah. Remember, if we put a chip in one of these, we drop it. It's, it's like two thousand pounds off, isn't it? <laughs> two thousand pounds off the price. So this 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 is the one that Tag had, wasn't it? Yeah. This is the one that Tag has. Yeah. Yeah. And because. It, you were saying, interestingly, that he plays a lot of jazz, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. 
that's it's just got a very beautiful sound and, and well, you can you know more than that you see that um, it's got humbucker tones, single coil tones, um, you can get almost telly light tones out of it, so it's quite versatile. Yeah. Um, it's very lightweight. And it's super light, yeah. um, and it's immaculately built. Yeah, um, I, I mean, the, the flame, I don't know, we, flame is just absolutely ridiculously it, crazy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. do, I, do I like it? No, I think it's ostentatious and over the top, and you know, and if I, if I could have got rid of all the extra purling, or purfling, whatever you call it, and all the extra bits, um, it just has something simpler, yeah. Um, so it's very flamboyant. It's a very yeah, flamboyant yeah. sort of. Uh, anyway, yeah. so so then, inspired by that, and and reading around what people liked with PRSs, then 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 the next PRS guitar that, that caught my fancy was um, I'm trying to remember what it's called now. Uh, a special. It's got three pickups. Um, it, it's claimed to do a, a cover an awful range of tones, a, you know, a huge range of tones. So I went to Anderton's, played a private stock, expecting to buy it. Um, right. It did nothing for me. I played a, a dozen of their standard ones, um, and uh, and they didn't do it for me either. So so then um, somebody commented about um, these guitars with different woods being really special. So I, I had another look and. And instead of being rosewood and you know and mahogany, they were maple and zircote and, and other you know. So zircote on the fretboard. Zircote on the fretboard and, and a maple neck. And I thought, well, okay, may, maybe that's the one. So I did a quick search, and lo and behold, Dykeman's in the Netherlands. This sounds like a, a pitch for them, but they 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 loved that combination and had custom ordered a couple like that. Uh, so I rang Jan Billum and he said, well, I, so I tell you what we'll do. We'll record you a, a clip couple of minutes of the Maple Zirko one uh, compared to the Rosewood Mahogany one. Um, and it was a fabulous clip because it, it showed me that the Rosewood Mahogany one sounded exactly like I remembered and the Maple Zirko one just had a bit more brightness and a bit more attack um, yeah. and still had all the tones that I didn't like. So therefore that was a really good um, thing because it saved me buying guitar, shipping it around, returning it and all the rest of it. But unfortunately then, Jan Willem said, but we have got this um, used guitar in that you'll really like. Um, and it's a semi-hollow 594, but it's different because it's got a Brazilian board um, and it's got uh, a tremolo. Um, and, you know, back to Tag, Tag had always said that he preferred his PRSs with less wood, tremolos took out less wood, the tremolo block added something and it changed the tone of the guitar slightly. Um, so it's less wood. Are we talking about this one, obviously? Yeah, so this one. So it, not only is it semi-hollow, but there's, um, if you can see, it's, it's, so it's if I, an if I... amazing back. So if you explain what's going on with the back. Maybe. Well, yeah, so apart from looking really gorgeous, that that's tremolo cover is exposing a, a kind of hole in the back where the springs lie. So, so there's less wood, you've got the, the spring effect. So, so what Jan... So I didn't, this was a guitar I didn't want. So if I have that back then, remain. So I didn't want this, um, but Jan Willem said, well, why don't we just record you a clip anyway? Uh, and I said, well, okay, why not? Um, um, and when I heard the clip, I was floored. It, it sounded absolutely gorgeous. So uh, let's, let's, so what, is this trying to be a 335, would you say? No, uh, I don't, I'm not sure it's trying to be anything, but uh, it sits, sitting somewhere on the Les Paul 335 spectrum. So if I just go through the pickups here. Yeah. Um, so this is the, the bridge, obviously. Thank you. 
This was a grey flamed one. It's kind of like, yeah, okay, fine. Um, it's the nicest looking guitar I've ever seen. It's, it kind of just goes alive with bronze and gold just popping out. When I opened the case, I thought, that that is rather special. I know the private stocks do kind of knock, knock it out of the park, but I never expected it to look like that. Um, and we're not really into the look. No, we we don't care about the look at all. You know, so this was a, an afterthought, wasn't it, for you? It was more. Yeah. So, so initially, why? What do you like about these? What's what 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 do you like? Well, no, what I, what I like about these two is um, vintage neck shape, vintage scale, you know, Gibson scale length, um, great hollow sounding tones. Um, mm -hmm. it, they don't sound like the traditional PRS formula. Um, they do sound like a. A variation on all the Gibson tones that we know and love. So um, you like the pickups? I, yeah, I love the pickups. I think they're great. Yeah, um, and, and, you, and, and so you, again, so this guy's has got the tremolo, and you're saying that this particular model sounds better with the tremolo. You think? Oh, I, I, I have no idea because I'm not a connoisseur. But the tag who's played thousands of these things says um, that his preference is for tremolo blocks, and you would imagine that, like on the Strat, whether you use it or not, it changes the tone and adds a, a shimmer. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, so that that guitar isn't that you know. So that's not a very common guitar you're holding there because there aren't many five nine fours with a tremolo. Um, right. There's even fewer with a Brazilian board. Um, so, yeah, I'm sure there's half a dozen knocking around. This this one was made for Nam in 2019, I think. Um, there you go. I mean, I'm really impressed. I, you know, for me. I, me personally, you know, I've had a chance to play these guitars, guys. Um, when we were in that Anderton's shop yeah. in, the, in England, it's a famous shop, um, you might know it. <laughs> um, we played these, a lot of these sort of cheaper, and when I say cheaper, I mean, for me, they're super expensive. They're like three, four thousand pounds, right? Yeah. And we weren't impressed, were we? No. But these are another another level. Yeah, no, no, they, they are fabulous. Um, so would you recommend these to people? Well, I mean, it's, it, no, it's it's hard to recommend a guitar that, that you know f for the price of which you could buy four or five really good guitars. Um, mm. There, I, re I recommend that if you don't like PRSs, that if you come across a private stock, you, you give it a play. Um, yeah. Um, it's um, this 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 hasn't turned me into a PRS fan. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but but I. I love these guitars, and, and Ramon said to me, oh, so you need to get a solid one now, and I said, no, I don't want a solid one, Do you know that's, that's, not, that's not the sound I want. So you, you really like the sort of semi-acoustic, full acoustic, yeah. and, and what do you, um, um, and, and we, do you recommend buying used or new, or? Oh, no, no, you talk to the wrong person, I'm not an expert, um, right. you know, what, the thing that, yeah, you, you made that comment about scratching them, the, the thing is that many of the owners keep these pristine, so, if you buy used, you're going to get uh, mm -hmm. a lot more. You know, you're going to get a lot of guitar for your money. I mean, what I, what I like about Brian guys is that he, you know, um, he keeps these guitars out. You know, people are walking past them. His family. He, he doesn't. He's, he's not. You know, putting you know cotton gloves on to, to to pick them up. So he uses these. He plays these, and um, I mean that's what they're for, aren't they? Yeah. You know, you don't really care if he gets a scratch on it, do you? Do you? No, no, I don't. As long um, as I don't do it. As long as you don't do it. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, I mean, that's just one of these personal philosophy things, isn't it? You know, the, these guitars are so so amazing that you could imagine somebody keeping them in a case. But if you keep it in a case, that's one more reason not to play it. So um, uh, mm. I often often grab this one. If you're playing at home, um, hollow and semi-hollow guitars um, have a better you know have a better acoustic experience. And playing at low volume with amps. Could you just demonstrate that? Just well, you've got. 
but but it's also when when you're picking up the sound from the amp, you get a bit more guitar feedback. Um, mm -hmm. So it, I I think they're a good substitute for you know Marshall stacks and stage volume um, if you're if you're playing at lower volumes. Um, Makes a lot of sense, yeah. So uh, yeah, so I love these two. Um, the, they're almost certain. You know, there may be a third in the future, but uh, solid body. No, why would I want a solid body? <laughs> I just said that for me, PRS is the best when there's less wood in them. Um, so right, okay then. So that's that's top tip from Brian. Check out the the super expensive when when you got when your ship comes in and you've got a bit of money. You know, give these a look. You know, we we don't absolutely the, hate the, PRS. No, know? the build the build quality on the ordinary ones is fabulous. Um, yeah. But um, I, the sound. But they they obviously put a lot of trouble, go to a lot of trouble with these private stock ones. Um, mm. and well, they feel handmade. They feel totally yeah. handmade. But having said that, I mean, the I might be lucky with these two because um, the, these two are were were reported to be two of the the very best private stocks that the guys in Diamonds had come across. Right, and we're um, just going to finish, guys. I don't know if you can see this with the light, but just check out, this is a hollow body. That. See the difference is, if you show me the back on that. The, well this is wood. Yeah, so this has the, the flame maple. And the neck's also very flamey. Is this a maple neck, Brian? No, it's mahogany. Mahogany neck, but mahogany neck with flame. Well, yeah. <laughs> because, just because. <laughs> there you go. So. Thank you very much for um, appearing on Coffee Chat Special in the West, beautiful West Country yeah. summer's day. And uh, we'll and see you soon. Next time we'll talk about guitars we truly love. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. From Brian and myself, take care. Thank Bye you. then. <laughs>